Hi guys, welcome back. It's September the 14th. Whoops, nearly tripped off. <laughs> uh, time for a wee update. So the first thing is I've just been picking some of these peppers. That one's got a little bit of uh, slug damage, but we'll be able to salvage it. But uh, they're like, what, the fun size or something to call them. But yeah, they, you know, we got so many anyway, so uh, I'm going to have some of those in the tea, I reckon. Right, let's have a look in the greenhouse. Going there, you can see I've been uh, picking apples. Um, it's still a bit early for me. I like to leave them on the tree as long as possible, but uh, that's the problem in Cumbria, you know, with the windy weather and that. This is they get damaged, and then it's going to be very, very hard to keep them through till October. But we'll try. A bit of beetroot today. Sorry about the wind noise, um, but you can see the onions better now. I think this row here was the Sturon, very very poor, one's gone to seed there, I'll use it up. And then these were Bedfordshire Champion, they've done much much better, I mean I've got some fresh Sturon seed, but um, I mean some of these, you know, they're pretty good size onions, so it's not all bad at all. What I've been doing here is just snipping off the flowering heads of the basil, we're just trying to keep it going as long as possible. And I love the aroma, you know, when you do that job, it's it's amazing. And um, so you can see these little peppers, they're still flowering, I mean they won't make up now, but uh, there's one there, look. That's just kind of ripening now, can you see? And then I noticed uh, we've got one here, that'll probably ripen. But it's quite surprising that they're still trying to set fruit, I suppose that's what they do, isn't it? Um, and then I took the cherries out now because they got blight, and uh, I've just I've just got these few crimson crush. So I'm not sure if I just spin you around. Um, I don't know. I think probably another week or so, and then I'm going to take all these out and see if I can get something planted up in the uh, in the greenhouse. But I'll show you what I've done in the frames. So I've been planting up a bit, uh, got some spring onion there, they're not looking brilliant but uh, hopefully we'll get some out of them. Then there's a few rocket, salad rocket, and then we've got a, a row of rocket there, and then I've just planted out these multi-sown radishes. That's the next lot of spring onions coming on. I thought I might try a few French beans, but to be honest, I think I was too late, I don't think they're going to make up. These are my spring cabbages, looking alright. And I've just sowed some more uh, spring onion here. Just sowed those now to follow that batch there. So they'll all be going either in the greenhouse or in these frames. Then next door, I've uh, got two little rows of spinach and then the rest is chard. And I've just sown another module tray of spinach there. So that should fill all this up and any leftover go in the greenhouse. Um, and that little pot there was my hilled two um, overwintering lettuce, but it, it's been a disaster. So I've sent away, I've, I've got a new packet, I had to get them from Holland. I couldn't find any in this country at all. So hopefully, I'm hoping I won't be too late with those. I've uh, had a few leaves off the Lolo Rosso, so I'm kind of hoping to get another six weeks or so out of those. And um, I was just having a look in the amongst the dwarf French beans here. There's actually still still some useful beans on, so I'm going to pick those now probably. That'll give us another meal out of those. And you can see the courgettes uh, got mildew, but it's, I'm not worried because uh, we've still got there's about two there, and then there's three down here. And the temperatures was four actually. It's supposed to pick up next week, so if we can just get it through another sort of week to ten days, you know, they'll make nice little uh, end of the season courgettes. Well, five minutes picking, guys. That's a very useful late harvest of beans. So, pretty happy with that. All right, catch you later. Guys, it's September the 16th, and I'm down on the orchard, and uh, you can see I've got my little army sort of uh, jacket on 
because it's got really big deep a pocket. That's why I, that's why I wear it really. Um, and it's a bit warmer, of course. These mornings are getting pretty chilly just now, and the grass is very wet, damp. You know, uh, had a lot of rain, but I think we're in for about three or four at least. Nice days. So look at the colour now. This is why one of the reasons I've been waiting. You know, I've been delaying harvesting. I mean, this variety isn't due to be picked till October anyway. But I mean, look at the fabulous colour on it. So obviously each day of sun, you know, it's going to hopefully ripen those a bit more. That's apple variety jumbo, by the way. Absolutely cracking apple. Um, so yeah, you, you know, on each, each day that the apple stays on the tree means hopefully a little bit more sugar. So we've had some pretty strong gusts. And if I just walk you down... I mean, they've not done too bad. There's one or two. There's a pair off down there. I can see a few over there need picking up. Uh, but it's this big tree here, this Harry Masters jersey. Can you see that? This is what I suspected they'd be all over the floor. So then I'm going to pick all those up now. And then we'll see what we've got. So that's... Sorry about the background ice. Uh, that's what I picked up. Probably a couple of buckets full there. But for every kind of couple of buckets, I'll show you what I'm losing. For example, I go around picking everything up off the floor that's been damaged by birds. And then these are what I go through the crates and they've all got brown rot as you can see. And uh, this is one of those beautiful peas good non such. You see where it's had a ding there and then it's started to get brown rot this you know they go very quickly I'll, I'm going to take that home because uh, one I want to weigh it and two I think I can salvage a good half of that for uh, put it in the freezer for some stewed apple so that won't get wasted but uh, that's that's the problem so it's a good job actually that uh, this tree is still got a really good crop on it even though I have picked um, the turn you round under that net one, two, three. I've got four crates full there, and then uh, five, six. Well, that'll be full shortly. That's seven. I think I've got, and then there's a half a one there, and uh, what is about four at home. So it's nearing on twelve crates, and um, yeah, there's there's tons to go. So it's going to be a good year, there's going to be plenty of apples, I'll, I'll not be short of fruit, that's for sure. Look at the leeks, I can see I've just got one there, gone to seed. I mean, if you were going to collect seed, you know, you would just leave that. And, uh, you know, when it flowered, if it, if it flowered and got pollinated, you could um, either put a bag over to stop the rain rotting the seed. I think that would work. But I'm not going to do that, I'll just dig it out. But generally speaking, they're looking pretty good. Obviously, I just need to get in soon and get them weeded. And these uh, these are the tops off the um, Sarpamira. So what I'll, I'll go and you know like turn them over. I mean, uh, we're going away for a few days, hopefully. But if I was here every day, this next four days going to be sunny. I would come down every day and turn them over each way so that they they dry out a lot better and then either compost or burn them, you know, get rid of them that way, otherwise they just end up up here because of our wet weather, a sort of sodden, stinking, rotting mass, really. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so one last look around. It's all, this time of the year, it's very contingent on the weather conditions, so I keep an eye on the forecast every day, and then at some point, you know, I've got to make a decision whether to come down and just pick everything that's left. But as I say, I'm trying to just nudge ever closer to the end of September or early October, even if the weather was kind. You know, like this is another, this is Jumbo up here as well. And interestingly, I showed you that one before. Beautiful, you know, let's see if we can zoom in. Red, gorgeous red. And it's funny, isn't it, that this is the same variety which I grafted. I Ryan grafted this tree, you can see where they 
the grafts were here, put two into that branch there, and uh, just not quite. They, they've got a nice colour, but they're, they're not just quite as. And then again on the shade side of the tree, you see the flushing, but they're not that deep red that the others were. And I guess it's it's just all down to the amount of sunshine that they get. But uh, I'm I'm really pleased, you know. And then this tree's done. This grafted trees, it's about three years ago I did this, and that is carrying a lovely, lovely crop. So I'll leave you there for this one. Take care as always, and thanks for watching, and uh, I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.